Hey guys, what's up? This is Shubham and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to talk about bridge controls test as someone suggested with this topic and I know a lot of fresh officers have doubt about how and what to do when they are supposed to do the control checks for the very first time as officers. So for this video I won't be going into much technical and operational details of uh, for each and every equipment but rather I'll just stick to what you have to do with that equipment as far as control checks are concerned so if you haven't already make sure to subscribe to my youtube channel for more videos like this and press the bell icon to get notified for the upcoming videos so let's dive into the topic so if you don't already know from where to start i will suggest you start from taking out a print of your company's arrival and departure checklist every company has one and it will cover almost each and everything you need to do before arrival or departure from any port. Typically, a company's arrival departure checklist will be something like this, having divided into certain parts or sections. Each part will cover different area of checks. The first part will be documentation and information. This section, as the name itself suggests, focuses more to the information gathering, like has the passage plan been made and reviewed by all officers and master? Local weather and warnings have been applied to charts? Advocate notices given to terminal, VTS, pilots? If visibility is less, then has a risk assessment been made? Pilot card ready? Stability, stresses and other cargo information available? Tides, tidal streams calculated and written on charts or not? The points in this section will already be covered by second or chief officer and if you are the one doing the control checks, you just have to make sure that everything is present and readily available if required. And in this video we are not going to talk much about it. So now coming to the second part and our area of interest for this video is equipment checks. So now we'll go one by one to each of the bridge equipments and we'll see what we have to do with each one of them. Radar. You can start by switching on the radar transmission, selecting it to the range you required if approaching or leaving berth, harbor or river. I will suggest to put it to a lesser range, say 3 miles, 1 mile or even less. You can increase or decrease the range as and when required. Now you can set up the radar by tuning it, selecting the correct gain, rain and sea settings for your radar or by auto tuning it. I won't be going into much details of how to do all that cause there are different make and models and the process can be different for different radar. But the purpose is all same. You can also performance monitor your radar and ensure your ARPA is C stabilized. And if you or the pilot or master want the reference of ground, you can set one of them to ground stabilization. Agdis. The settings for EGDIS are very vast and as this is mainly the work area of second officer so let's assume he has already set up all the required settings as per the passage plan from birth to birth. Now for the control checks purpose you have to check whether the route has been set up on the EGDIS or not. Check the safety settings and you should know how to manually plot the positions on the EGDIS which you call LOPs gyro magnetic compass and repeaters take the latest compass ever and also put it on the pilot car match the heading of all the repeaters with the main gyro if repeaters are showing some error then adjust them you should know how to synchronize the repeaters the bridge and engine room clocks the bridge and engine room clocks should be synchronized nowadays all the clocks can be controlled by a bridge as they have the interconnected system so you don't need to worry much about it but if your ship doesn't have that system synchronize the clocks course recorder there are several types of course recorders some are digital some are manual you have to see which is yours the functioning is all same and yes both will have printer papers on them so make sure there is sufficient paper on the course recorder set up the date time in UTC and heading if not already synchronized. When you have set up all that, just mention the voyage number, date, time of check 
and sign just for easy reference speed log set up the log in water tracking not in ground tracking and if you select auto it will take the ground as the reference when the depth is less so keep in mind i will suggest to always keep it in water tracking engine movement recorder or telegraph check there is sufficient paper and mark the date and time in gmt eco sounder again check for sufficient paper feed your ship's draft and adjust the depth settings according to the depths or soundings given on chart and set the alarm as required by the master or ukc policy of your company keep the settings above the ukc policy also just a tip set the depth settings on auto it might happen you have selected the right depth at the time of checks and according to the present depth of your water time you have to change every time the soundings or the depth changes or you might forget to change the settings at all so it will give you false data so keep it in auto it will automatically changes the settings according to the depth it's getting gps there isn't much settings to play with but you can check the hdop value and self check for the equipment ais feed all the dynamic information like the draft type of cargo number of crew destination and eta and remember to change the status as required bunvas keep bunvas on manual mode vdr ensure it is fully operational and no faulty alarm shown on the screen gmdss on the gmdss console you mainly have sat c mfhf and nbdb vhfs are kept separately near the other navigational aids ensure mfhf and vhfs are set to high power and correct channel and frequency set the correct navigational area on sat c bridge and engine room communication check the auto telephone is working fine and also the sound power telephone for the engine room the steering gear room and bridge if you need you can have the internal walkie talkies kept in the same channel with engine room but i will suggest not to use much of the walkie talkies with engine room as you will be communicating with the deck people and other ships communication can also interfere while berthing unberthing at port other than that check the pa system and radio check the walkie talkies with all the deck personnel carrying one navigation lights and shapes check all the navigational lights working properly check all the additional lights if required by any port as there's special requirement also check for the relevant shapes whatever is required signal lights check for the surge lights signaling lamp and morse light if you have one also check for the steering light your duty ab might want one at the night sound signaling equipment check for ship's whistle both in manual and automatic operation binoculars check for the binoculars window wipers and clear view screen it might rain or maybe you are navigating through ice area so you need both to be in good working condition check for them in time well in hand windlass and mooring winches confirm with the deck party to try out the machinery and report back to you after the test now moving on to part c is steering gear checks there are many checks related to steering gear and there are guidelines provided for doing these checks by imo in chapter 5 regulation 26 of solar 74 as the basic and practical approach call to engine room and ask them to send some crew along with the engineer to the steering gear room contact with them again with the sound power telephone when they have reached to the steering gear room also it's better if you keep someone with you on the bridge who can follow up your helm orders while you are on the phone communicating with the steering gear room engineer try your main steering gear give certain helm orders to your helmsman and confirm with the engineer if they've got the right helm indication in the steering room also check your rudder angle indicators inside bridge and on the bridge wings if they are showing the correct helm order and not stuck check all the dimmers also check the timing with individual steering motors and then with both 
the steering should come from hard over to hard over that is 35 degrees from one side to 30 degrees to the other side in 28 seconds or less note down the timing and that you have to mention in pilot car and also in the bridge moment book try out the nfu mode same like the manual mode confirm the helm orders with the steering gear room now ask the engineer to try out the emergency steering from the steering gear room for that you need to keep the tally motors off on the autopilot system let the steering room take over the control to local and then you tell them various helm orders and check whether they are following up the helm orders correctly on the rudder angle indicator or not after the steering checks you move on to check the emergency power supply take load on emergency generator and one of your steering motors should be able to work with the emergency power source now test all the alarms on the steering motor panel that is mandatory requirement for vessels navigating in us waters part d test the main engine from the bridge control room and local maneuvering select and accept the location of various control locations first keep the control location on bridge then give a head and astern movement if you are in berth just make sure all your lines are tight and people are standby on the stations gangway is up and propeller is clear likewise try out the main engine keeping the controls in ecr and local maneuvering when you have done the main engine test your telegraph test has also completed so you don't need to do that separately now at last if you are heading to sea confirm with chief officer that the ship is all secured and if there are chances of getting heavy weather on the way ahead then confirm if all the precautions been taken and preparation done all crew are on board and all the shore personnel and equipments ashore required security and stowage checks have been done or not after getting all the confirmations you can now fill up the time and sign the checklist and now you are done with all the preparations of arrival and departure from your end I hope this video will help some of the guys who are now joining the ship for the very first time as officers. Don't worry, you still have many doubts unless you yourself get into that. We all have doubts and make mistakes and learn from them. You won't learn until you do it yourself. Just remember, you already have the license and you are qualified to do it. So now, I wish you farewells and following seas. Take care.